in this movie, we're going to use this bracket of exposures in Lightroom, and we're going to create a realistic HDR that looks like this. We're just going to use Photoshop and Lightroom. Now, in order to use this technique, you'll need a fairly recent version of both. The time of recording, you'll need the most recent version of uh, Lightroom, uh, version 5, perhaps version 4 will work, and you'd need an, uh, a Photoshop with HDR Pro, which would be CS5 or later, so CS5, CS6, or CC. Now, we're going to prepare our images first. So I've got this image with the highlights intact, a nice midtones, and a nice shadow detail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three images, and I'm just going to go to one of them, and I'm going to make sure that everything's the way I need it to be before we send it out to Photoshop. So I'm going to go to my Develop Module. And what I want to make sure, first of all, is that my white balance is set correctly. You can just use the drop-down menu if you shot RAW to pick the one that most closely resembles your shooting condition you were in, or you can just dial in a white balance setting using the sliders. You'll want all of these sliders here to be set to neutral, and clarity will give it just a little bit, say plus 10. Your tone curve should be neutral, HSL, split toning. In your detail tab, set the amount of sharpening to 40 with a radius of 0.8, and detail of 35. That is the scenic sharpening preset that comes with Lightroom. Your lens correction detail er, tab, make sure you turn on enable profile correction and remove chromatic aberration. And then if we come down to camera calibration, the one that I find that works best for this technique is choosing camera faithful. If This is with a Canon camera, so if you have a Nikon, it might be slightly different, but something that doesn't have a whole lot of saturation to it, and that will keep the colors from running away from us. So these images are good to go. If they weren't, I could adjust the one. And if this says auto sync, it will automatically adjust the others. But what we can do is we're going to go into the grid view. I just press the G key to go into the grid. I've got the three images select, selected. I'm going to choose sync settings. I'm going to just hit synchronize, and that's going to make sure that all of the settings are synchronized across all three of the images. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on them and choose edit in, merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. And that's going to export out those three files and build a 32-bit image inside Photoshop. Now it's saying, hey, um, you don't have the most recent version of Photoshop, which is true, I'm using CS6, not Creative Cloud, um, but it's not really gonna make any difference, so I'm just gonna hit Open anyways. And it's going to go through, and it's gonna build the 32-bit file for me in Photoshop. Well, here we are inside Photoshop's um, merged HDR Pro dialog box. If your uh, display looks a little different, I think by default it goes to 16 bits. And what we're going to want to do is change this to 32 bits because we're actually going to do the tone mapping, the, the reduction of the 32-bit image down into something that you can actually see properly on a screen in Lightroom. So I'm going to choose 32 bits. Now I'm also going to turn on the ghost removal because it's possible that the clouds and stuff were moving enough to create some ghosting during my image. And I'm going to choose the minus two image because it's the one with the cloud detail in it. Then I'm going to set my white point with this slider, which just means basically dragging the slider over until the brightest part of the image has some detail in it. We're good. And then I'm just going to click OK. Now we're inside Photoshop again and we can see that uh, we've got this image. It doesn't look great, but that's okay. This is actually a 32-bit image. There's a lot more information here than it is just currently displaying on the screen. I just need to save this, um, and I could save it and it would go back into my Lightroom library, but then sometimes it's hard to find because I've got a very large library and it's put in a very large folder. So I'm just going to do a save as. That's uh, Command-Shift-S or Control-Shift-S if you're on a PC. And I've got a uh, Import to Lightroom folder set up. And I'm just going to make sure that my format is set to TIFF and hit Save. Now I want to make sure that it's set to 32-bit float. Click OK. And it's going to save out that 32-bit TIFF image that I can re-import into Lightroom. So I'm just going to close this now. I don't need to save it because I already saved it. I'm going to go back to Lightroom and choose Import. 
and choose that folder and import it. Now comes the fun. In Lightroom, I'm going to go to my develop module and in the basic tab, I'm going to start by moving the highlight slider down to minus 100. And then I'm going to move the shadow slider up to plus 100, which is going to basically open up the dynamic range in the scene. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the exposure a bit. Now, if you use it normally, you'll notice that the exposure goes down to minus 4, but actually on one of these images, exposure goes down to minus 10 and plus 10. So we've got lots of room to play with. I'm going to reduce this by about half a stop, and I'm going to increase the contrast in the overall image. I'm looking uh, for the general look of the image. I'm not worried about individual areas of the image. I'm going to increase the clarity, but I want to use a light touch because I don't want to go all grungy. I'm trying to create something that looks fairly realistic, so maybe about like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe add just a bit of color. So I'm going to increase my vibrance and then I'm going to grab the adjustment brush and right now it's very bright but that's okay because I can just dial it in. This will help me see where I'm painting and I'm going to paint in the front of this house here and in fact maybe on the side too. This is really the most important part of the image and so I want that to stand out. Of course you may be thinking this is way too much and it absolutely is but that's okay I just want to see where I'm working and then I'm gonna bring this down yeah maybe about a half a stop to a half a stop well it's up by a half a stop the next thing I might do is grab my radius filter and I'm going to create a radius around this house it's actually set to go the wrong way right now so I'm actually going to reduce the exposure so that it draws your eye in towards the house. So that's before and after, before and after. And it has the added bonus of basically taming the highlights that are getting a little out of control in this area, but they're not too bad. Overall, I'm going to say I'm done there with the radius tool. Maybe increase the contrast just a hair more. And that will be my final image. I didn't have to use Photomatix or HDR Effects Pro, just Photoshop and Lightroom, and I got a fairly realistic looking HDR.